What is up guys, this is another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and recap Raw and Nitro from 1997 and this week we're going back to December 8th, 1997 and covering Raw 237 and Nitro 117. So as usual we will start off with Raw and move on to Nitro. So this Raw took place in Portland, Maine and drew a 3.0 average rating. So we got a decent rating here, not as high as it can or will be but pretty good for this time um so throughout the show this is the night after the dx pay-per-view so the in your house dx or whatever they're calling it the december pay-per-view and so we get a lot of replays or like recap showing of just like clips and stuff going through the matches and everything throughout the night and so the first one that starts off the show is of stone cold steve austin and the rock match and so it just shows what happened in that match and everything of stone cold retaining the title and then that goes into the actual show where we have vince mcmahon who comes out to the ring to make some announcements and stuff like that and he starts off by saying that stone cold has gotten away with too much for too long in this company and that he's tired of him attacking officials and everything and then at the pay-per-view the night before stone cold drove a truck out to the ring and into the arena and stuff and that endangered fans and so he's just tired of it. and so he declares that stone cold must defend the ic title or intercontinental title tonight against the rock and so because of that that anger stone cold so stone cold comes out to confront vince and he just starts off by saying that Vince can't tell him what to do because Stone Cold's his own boss and he's in control of everything and he ends up bringing up or doing the whole thing where if you want to see if you want to see Stone Cold kick Vince McMahon's ass give me a hell yeah and of course the crowd goes crazy with hell yeah and so he wants they obviously want him to beat up Vince McMahon and then Vince uh, says, speaking of that, I want to bring up something, your language, it needs to change and stuff. So again, he's trying to change more about Stone Cold and one of the things is fixing his language. And then they move on to other stuff and then at the very end, Stone Cold mentions that if he has to come back out again tonight, he's going to attack somebody and it's not going to be what Vince wants and stuff. So it's setting the groundwork of Stone Cold getting an attack on someone later tonight. From there, we go into a commercial for the Karate Fighter, so the whole like, uh, sponsorship promotional thing they have or whatever with karate fighters a little like kids game thing and it's our championship match between jerry the king lawler and sunny are the two finalists in this thing and so jerry the king lawler wins and then after it they go to like little replay type things of like beforehand or something and it's lawler puts gum on his guy's foot so help keeps their little ninja guy on the stand so like i said it's like a rock'em sock'em robots almost where you have a, you control a person and they like spin around and like kick and stuff and you have to try and knock the other person off the thing by hitting a button on them and it pops them off their little pedestal and so he puts gum on it says so if he gets hit it won't come off and then it also shows him paying off the referees so no matter what he'll get the win and so there's like some official guy that has ruled this and ends up reversing the decision giving the win to Sonny so Sonny is the karate fighters champion then back in the show we have a recap of the match between the New Age Outlaws and the Legion of Doom and the Outlaws were able to retain the t uh, tag team titles by disqualifications because the Godwins interfered in the match and then with that happening it then goes into our next match of the show which is the Legion of Doom to face the Godwins and the Godwins end up coming out with the New Age Outlaws and so this match is pretty boring overall. And then at one point Kane ends up coming out and starts attacking Hulk from the Legion of Doom with a pile driver and a tombstone. And of course when Kane comes out the Godwins just run away and the animals laid out on the outside because he was attacked by the Godwins. So he's just laying on the outside this whole time. And after Kane attacks Hawk and leaves the New Age Outlaws then come running in and they attack Hawk and just start beating up. On him even more until animal comes running in with a chair from the outside and chases them off but then we come back and the outlaws are back in the ring and so they start to cut a promo and they um, are bringing up that there's no more tag team for them to face by beating the legion of doom and they start singing uh the na 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 song so na 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 hey 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 goodbye or whatever saying goodbye to the legion of doom but he calls them the old instead of LOD so old spelling old obviously and so they say since they beat all the tag team competition there is even though I'm pretty sure they haven't but since they have they're now going to start competing in singles competition with each of them and so the first person up is Billy Gunn and he's taking on Dude Love and so since while this match is going on Road Dog is on commentary and he does make a reference that um the Godwins 
he says something about like the Godwins better known as Southern Justice or something like that. So it's bringing in their new tag team name of Southern Justice that they'll be getting here soon. But in the actual match, Dude Love ends up getting the pin off the Sweet Shin music and then hits the double arm DDT and starts to go for the pin. But Road Dog comes running in and attacks him with the chair. And then Billy Gunn goes up top and does a leg drop off the top rope onto Dude Love, who has a title on his face. So it's, you know, the leg drop hits the title into Dude's face, hurting him even more. And so then they leave and ends that match. Then next up we have Michael Cole, who's I think on commentary tonight, or at least for the first hour. And he's just talking to The Rock backstage, so it's like Rock's up on the Titron or whatever. And Michael Cole is asking him questions and stuff, and I don't really think much goes down. Oh, Rock's just uh, talking about how that he's confident that he'll win tonight and walk out with the IC title, which we'll see if that happens or not. Then next up we got a recap of the light heavyweight championship match from the DX pay-per-view where Taka ended up beating Brian Christopher. I think there were some like shenanigan things going on there. I can't remember exactly what happened. I didn't write it down. But with that going on, Jim Cornette then brings Taka Michinoku out for an interview to talk to him, you know, about being the first champion and stuff like that. And in it, uh, Jim Cornette brings up, you know, that Taka can't really speak English, but he's been taking some lessons and there's they bring up a video of JR teaching talk how to speak and he's teaching him how to say slobber knocker and so it's talk you know trying to say slobber knocker and everything and then soon after that Jerry the King Lawler then comes out and he interrupts the whole interview thing and he's claiming that Taka stole the title from the real champion claiming you know Brian Christopher his son is the real champion and so he's just trying to like attack Taka and everything and he brings up um, he asks Taka if he can even speak English because in America or America should be for English speakers only and so if he's not he needs to leave so of course looking back now is not looking very good for these days with people still believing that way but this was 20 years ago and so still haven't changed much and Taka ends up responding to Lawler if he can speak English by saying you jackass and so he you know calls Lawler a jackass and so of course that makes everyone laugh and Lawler gets upset and so he starts taking his clothing off and he's got his like ring attire underneath like his sports coat and stuff like that or whatever he's wearing and he, he starts trying to fight Taka and while that's going on Jim Cornette starts introducing Taka's first competitor for the title and it's a guy a new guy named El Unico I think or Unico I can't remember how they pronounce it as he comes down and gets into the ring Lawler and Unico both start teaming up on Taka and double teaming him well it turns out that Unico was Brian Christopher the whole time and so it, he ends up taking the mask off and revealing it's him and stuff so they're just both beating up on Taka so no match happens. Then next up we got a little video of what they're calling DX Destruction of the Heart Foundation and so it's just a video of different like clips and stuff of DX or Shawn Michaels and some of the DX members beating up the different members of the Heart Foundation and taking them out showing like British Bulldog from the one night only pay-per-view then taking out Bret Hart at Survivor Series Jim Knight Hart from the last couple weeks and stuff and so it's just them taking out so now that leads to Owen Hart which at the DX pay-per-view it showed that Owen Hart ran in and attacked Shawn out of nowhere so leading up to that, that's going to be the next feud of Owen Hart and Shawn Michaels. But next up, we got our match of Flash Funk taking on the Interrogator, which they're now calling Kurgan. So I don't remember if they've done that in the past, but he's now got the new name of Kurgan. And he comes out with the Jackal. So again, still part of like, he's can't remember if he's still dressed in the Truth Commission outfit or if he's in his all black outfit. I'm not sure at this. I couldn't remember. But in the match, we have Flash Funk. And with him be going up against the giant guy, he does the usual thing of trying to use, um, you know, speed and agility and stuff to take down Kurgan. But Kurgan's able to overpower him. And Kurgan eventually gets the claw, which is his finishing move and stuff, put on Flash, and he like picks Flash up and slams him down onto the ground. Now I wrote that Flash submitted, but I can't remember if he submitted or if he got pinned. Because, you know, I think he would be laying on his back so his shoulders could have been down so he, the ref could have counted and got pinned. But I'm not exactly sure. But Kurgan continues to hold on to the claw. So Recon and Sniper come running down and they try to like are pulling uh, Kurgan off of Flash. But Kurgan just ends up like pushing them off or something or like shrugging them off or whatever. And so they go falling down and stuff. So they're just standing back like watching this happen. And so because of that, the ref is then talking with the ring announcer and the ring announcer comes on saying that, uh, because of Kurgan 
acting the way he is or whatever they call it. Um, he's reversing the decision. So Flash technically gets the win even though he's, you know, what they, whatever they say, like won the match but lost the war. <laughs> I know it's not their proper thing, but that's pretty much what it is. He won the match by decision, but he definitely didn't win this match. And so to get him to stop, the Jackal ends up coming in and just slapping Kurgan in the face. And of course he's like, oh no, he just slapped Kurgan. Kurgan's going to kill him. But it causes Kurgan to release the hold and then they just leave together. Then next up we got a recap of the Shawn Michaels and Ken Shamrock match at DX where Shawn Michaels lost by disqualification because Triple H and China interfered. So he lost but he still retains the title. And so that leads into hour number two and we have DX coming out to the ring. And when they get into the ring they set up a table and chairs in the middle of the ring. And then they start cutting a promo and Triple H talks about how he beat Sergeant Slaughter in the boot camp match. And then Shawn Michaels starts talking about Owen Hart attacking him. And he compares Owen Hart to a piece of poop. And so he like about a piece of poop and that no matter how hard you try to like flush and get rid of it, it just keeps coming up. And so it's like a little poop nugget. So this is where Owen Hart gets starts being called nugget and stuff referring to. As Shawn put it, a piece of poop that it's like small and floating on the top of the water and every time you flush it it just doesn't go down the toilet and so it's just hard to get rid of and everything referring oh to that where the rest of the poop is the heart foundation and stuff that they've gotten rid of and so sean brings up that since or he wants this face owen hart or get payback on him and so he says we're gonna sit here and wait for owen hart to come out and so they sit down and start playing some uh poker at the table and then Sean brings up wait a couple weeks ago I said you know if I I forget what it was if he won or lost a match or something he would come out naked and he goes because of that I'm we're gonna do, do strip poker and so they start playing it and like Sean starts you know taking like shoes off or something like that after the first hand and so they end up moving out of the ring to ringside so the table's like right at the bottom of the ramp because we have matches going on and so they're sitting out there while a match is going on and that brings in our next match of Skull and 8-Ball from the DOA taking on Miguel and Jose from the Los Bariquas. And so throughout the match as the match is going on, obviously with DX outside playing strip poker, it keeps showing the members, which is pretty much uh, mostly Shawn Michaels but Triple H every now and then taking clothes off because they keep losing the china and stuff but in the match miguel and jose end up doing a tag double whatever you call it double move tag moves i don't know what you call it at every chance they can so they keep like getting the ref distracted and stuff with um the like the ref will be distracted by the other doa member trying to come in and when that happens they'll just do like a double team move on whichever doa members in the ring and stuff just trying to keep the upper hand but savio which is out there with them ends up pulling out a two by four from under the ring and he hits one of the doa members it's skull and able the two twin guys so i don't know which one was which but he hits one of them in the right leg which takes that guy down and the ref was distracted so the ref doesn't notice or anything and Miguel ends up getting the pin on that DOA member. So Los Bariquas win that match. And we go to commercial and come back. And DX is now back in the middle of the ring at the poker table. And continuing on with the strip poker and stuff. And Sean has lost another hand. And so he is taking his pants off now. So he's down to nothing but his underwear. And so of course he's doing some antics with that and everything. But the headbangers end up coming out because they have a match next and so they come in the ring and you know are yelling at DX like why are you in the ring and everything and they end up flipping the card table and so of course that pisses DX off and so they start fighting with the headbangers and Sean takes what they call a pitcher I couldn't tell what it was at all when he had it but he takes it and smashes it against Mosh's head. So that kind of takes Mosh out for the most part. But then D Triple H is fighting with Thrasher. And so they take him over, get him up on the turnbuckle. Well, Triple H is up on the turnbuckle. And they lift Thrasher up to him into a powerbomb position. And they powerbomb him through the card table. And so it's like just a little square table, like a square card table that you can see at fine at stores and stuff. And when they do that, the whole like tabletop breaks through. And so you just have like the ring of the table frame and stuff that he falls into. And it just looks funny. But Sean, um, after this, they're just, you know, continuing to beat on the headbangers and posing and everything. And Sean starts posing around his underwear doing stuff related to that and you know inappropriate stuff whatever until owen hart comes running in out of nowhere and attacks sean with a tackle and you know gets a few hits on him but triple h starts to go for owen and owen gets out of the ring and goes running through the crowd ending that whole drip poker segment then next up we have a match of jeff jarrett taking on vader 
And so it's mentioned that Jeff Jarrett won the match against The Undertaker by disqualification. I don't know exactly how, if it, well, I assume it was probably Kane, with Kane being around, but Jeff Jarrett beat Undertaker. Um, but before the match starts, Goldust and Luna end up coming out, and Goldust, uh, like, so Vader and Jeff Jarrett are in the ring, and Goldust walks up to ringside, and he just opens his coat, because he's wearing, like, a trench coat, and so they're playing it off that he's flashing Vader, so he's got no clothes on under the trench coat, and so he flashes Vader, and of course that causes Vader to then chase after Goldust, and they go running up the ramp to the back, and so Jeff Jarrett ends up winning by countout, so he's got two wins now in the WWF since coming back and they're both under Fugazi circumstances. Then we got a recap of the Mark Mao versus Butterbean match at the pay-per-view, and it sh talks about or shows how Mero ended up hitting Butterbean with the like little stools they sent because they had like a boxy match, and then he also hit a low blow on him, so that caused the referee to DQ Mark Mero. So Butterbean got the win, and that follows up with a match between Mark Mero taking on Salvador Sincere. And so Mark Mero comes out and he talks about how Salvatore is just a jobber. And he says, you're not even Salvatore Sincere. You're not a like pizza delivery boy from Italy or something like that. He says, your name's Tom Brandy, which is Salvatore's real name. And so he just uses his shoot name and stuff there. And then Mero ends up bringing out Sable and she's wearing the potato sack. So it's just like a burlap sack and it says like potato on it or something. And so Mark's talking about how this is how he wants Sable to look from now on. And so she's in the ring and he tells her to, you know, help take me, help me take my coat off or something. So he's got his back to her with his arms out waiting for her to pull the, his like weird like little boxing jacket thing off. And instead she pulls off the sack and she's wearing a very, very small leather bikini. So you're seeing a lot of Sable skin is what I could say. And so this is probably, you know, a big part of first getting to really see Sable do this kind of stuff. So they're very going uh, very risque with her right now. And so because of that, that pisses Mark Mero off and he's freaking out about that. And Salvatore Sincere ends up drop kicking Mark Mero who falls out of the ring. And, you know, he's trying to cover up Sable. So he was distracted. So he gets knocked out of the ring. And then Sincere ends up winning by count up because Mero took the sack and put it or, or his jacket and stuff and put it around Sable and walked her to the back covering her up and stuff. So Sincere got won by count out. So we've had two count outs in the last two matches so far. And we had one earlier. And then that goes into our main event for the night, which is The Rock taking on Stone Cold for the Intercontinental title. And before the match actually even starts or anything, Vince McMahon and many officials come out to ringside. And I think it's mentioned that there's like security or at least referees and stuff around ringside. There's a lot of people outside. And so they end up bringing Stone Cold out and Stone Cold comes out wearing jeans and not in ring attire. So Vince questions him about that and he's looking very upset about it. And so Stone Cold says that, you know, he went to the back. He had a hot dog and a Steve Weiser. So this is the first time I've heard Steve Weiser brought up, which of course is his like Budweiser, but his version of it. And so he decided that, you know, last night he beat The Rock already and so he doesn't need to do it again. And so he's not going to have the match. And of course that pisses Vince off and so he's like well if you don't like that Vince how are you going to punish me? And so Vince brings up that he will strip Stone Cold of the title and he'll just give it to The Rock. And so Stone Cold's if that's what you want he goes there's only one title I want and that's the WWF title so I'm going to give up my IC title. And so he ends up handing the title over to The Rock and then of course as The Rock's like preening over it or whatever like you know staring like I really got the title even though he's had it before. Um, but he's like so whatever celebrating or whatever and Stone Cold ends up hitting the stunner on him and so he chases the rock out of the ring and or like rolls whatever out of the ring and he tells the rock on the microphone he says hey rock dta don't trust anybody and so this is the birth of the whole dta stuff with stone cold and then of course that pins vince off and so they all just start to leave and everything and vince is standing on the outside apron and stone cold starts running the ropes and when he hits the ropes next to vince it knocks vince off the ring apron and to the floor and so stone cold's like making things like i was just running the ropes and stuff you like it, it was an accident and everything and so stone cold took that IC title back and we never got an actual match or anything and stone cold remains the IC title holder so that's it for raw this week i think it was pretty fun and interesting and it's definitely going more into the attitude air um i think it's here in like a week or two because i know it's in december where vince makes the announcement that um you know the whole we're no longer gonna insult your intelligence and stuff and going for 
a stronger rating or whatever. It's like PG or PG 13 rating or whatever they call it. And so um, we're getting definitely getting into the attitude here now because you know we got DX stripping down, we got Sable in barely any clothes, Stone Cold cussing a lot and using the finger and everything. So we're got the Vince McMahon character and everything. So we're definitely kicking off into the attitude era in the WWF. So it was just fun and enjoying. And now we'll move on to Nitro. And again, this is Nitro 117 from December 8th, 1997. And it took place in Buffalo, New York and drew a 4.3 rating. So a point and a third above Raw. So the show kicks off with a replay of the last week's event with the whole J.J. Dillon interview where he decides to make the match between Eric Bischoff and Larry Zbysko at Starcade for the control of Nitro. And so we get that replay at the beginning of the show and then the show opens up and we immediately go into a match of Conan taking on Ray Trailer and so the match overall was pretty boring nothing really major happened but a few minutes in and stuff the lights end up flickering and then going out and they go up for a really long time like I was surprised how long they went out for but they end up coming back like you can hear stuff going on in the ring like moves and stuff but they come back on and Conan is laid out in the middle of the ring and so Ray Trailer's just like looking around everywhere like in confusion just like you know trying to watch his back to make sure he doesn't get attacked. And so he sees the opportunity so he walks over and puts his foot on top of Conan and still looking around the whole time. And the ref counts the three and so Ray Trailer gets the pin for that match. And from there we go to commentary and they throw to a replay of the attack on DDP last week. So at the very end where they end up where Hulk Hogan came out and did the diamond cutter on DDP twice and then put the sting mask on him and stuff. And so we got that replay. And then that leads into the match of Barbarian coming out with Jimmy Hart taking on Steve Mongo McMichaels. And so this match with both of them was pretty boring and it was a very messy match. But Steve McMichaels ends up getting the win with the tombstone. And as soon as he gets the pin on that, Jimmy Hart's up on the apron yelling and screaming. And Steve McMichaels goes over and grabs a hold of him and then punches him, knocking him off the apron. And like at that time, Ming had the, come running out and he ends up catching Jimmy Hart as he, Jimmy Hart falls back and stuff. And so I thought that was kind of funny. But he puts him down and then gets in the ring and starts fighting with, with McMichaels. And Ming ends up getting the Tongan death grip on him as the segment ends. Then next up we go to Mean Gene who brings out Disco Inferno to ask him some questions. Uh, and Mean Gene brings up uh, how there's rumors going around in the locker room and stuff about Disco. Especially after he lost to Jackie so that he lost to a woman and stuff. And Disco says it was a no win situation. And if anyone has anything to say to him they should say it to his face. And then he just ang is angry and goes off to the back. And then we got Mean Gene bringing out Buff Bagwell for an interview. And Buff talks about um, how last week Lex Luger didn't show him anything. And that tonight he's going to step up and get his chance in the company by taking down Lex Luger. And so challenges Luger to a match tonight. And then that leads into a cruiserweight match of Dean Malenko taking on Prince Iakea. And at the beginning of the match Eddie Guerrero comes out to commentary. And he ends up taking Bobby Heenan's spot at the commentary table. And so he's just talking and stuff throughout the match. But in the actual match, there's a lot of good technical moves, but the match isn't like anything super amazing. But it is pretty decent with these two, of course, Dean Malenko and then Prince IK being new and everything. I was kind of impressed. But Eddie makes a comment once that Dean uh, makes comments on Dean being expressionless. And I think he said something about like Dean's wife could be like, hey, we're having a baby. Dean be like, okay, and stuff. And that's like how he says it and everything. So just making fun of Dean Malenko. But Dean ends up getting the win with the Texas Cloverleaf. Then next up we got our first Nitro Girls dance segment. And they're dancing up at the commentary table. And then commentary throws to a Nitro Party ad. And then we get an NWO black and white commercial. And this time it's a commercial of NWO just beating up on the Giants. So again it's like the DDP one and stuff they've had in the past week. Of just all of different NWO members. Just all stuff they've done to a member of WCW. And so this time it's the Giant. And then that goes into Mean Gene interviewing the Giant. And Giant says that Kevin Nash accepts his match at Starcade, So we're going to have Kevin Nash versus the Giant. And then Giant talks about how he's going to bring the choke slam to the match to defeat Kevin Nash. Even though his hand's still injured and wrapped up and everything. 
Then we got another Nitro Girl segment, so it's kind of we got some really close together dance segments there, but I guess that's what they do. And that goes to Chris Benoit in a match against Raven. But um, there's no Raven. For some reason, he's not there tonight. But instead, we get the new guy that's been talked about the past couple weeks that I didn't know his name. But it is Lodi. And so commentary actually says that they got a note and stuff that his name is Lodi and everything. So this is the first time we figure out who he is. And in the match, Benoit just completely controls Lodi and dominates him and stuff. And so there's no real match going on, just like a squash match for Benoit. But Benoit ends up hitting the flying headbutt and then puts the cross face on for the win. And so you expect the flock to come running in to attack Benoit, but they're just standing out in the crowd and they just like are, you know, brushing their hands, like brushing them off. Like, we don't want you or anything. And commentary mentions that without Raven there to control them, they don't know what to do and stuff. And they don't, you know, they won't attack people like usual. And that leads into hour number two, and it starts with a Mean Gene interview, and he interviews Ric Flair. So we got a lot of Mean Gene on the show tonight. But Ric Flair predicts that the WCW guys will beat the NWO guys at Starcade, so that's the first thing he wanted to bring up. And then he talks about how he wants a cage match with Kurt Henning at Starcade, and so I think we do end up getting that. And then Mean Gene brings up the whole Bret Hart joining the NWO, and Flair says that he is the best there is, the best there was, or ever will be, not Bret Hart, and if he did join the NWO, well, that's just a sad thing. Ending off that interview, the next up we got Hugh Morris taking on the Macho Man, and at the very beginning of the match, Macho Man's on the outside because there's a there's a football player, I think a quarterback, and his name's Jim Kelly. I'm not a football person, so I don't really know anything. But he said he's from the Buffalo Bills because we're in Buffalo, New York and stuff. So and he's there at ringside, and so Macho Man's over, like, talk to him, and ends up knocking the guy's head off. And so Hugh Morris hits Macho Man from behind the, and, like, shoves him into the railing and, like, towards Jim Kelly, and there's another, like, teammate there and stuff. And so they start beating up on him, even though they're completely doing fake hits. Like, they look so bad. They're doing some like forearm shots on Macho Man both of the football players are but Morris was able to pull Macho back and get him into the ring for the match and in the match nothing big goes on but Macho does end up hitting some elbow drops but he refuses to take the pinfall so he'll hit an elbow he would hit an elbow drop start to go for the pin but at the two count he'd lift Hugh Morris up and then go up for another elbow drop and he does that a couple times and then he ends up attacking the referee taking the ref out and then Macho Man starts to go up for another elbow drop and the lights go out and this time when the lights are out there's a bunch of like electricity noises so it's like you know I think so. I feel like someone's getting electrocuted or something but they come back on and Macho Man is laid out in the middle of the ring with a sting mask on his face and I think Hugh Morris is laid out too because of Macho Man's elbow drops so no one ends up winning the match there. We then have Eric Bischoff and Rick Rude coming out to commentary and Rick Rude gets up in front of the commentary people and starts kind of promo on them calling them monkeys the whole hear no evil see no evil speak no evil monkey things that each one of them are and then um, he threatens them that if the lights go out again they will be attacked so commentaries you know worried the rest of the night if the lights go out again we're gonna get beat up or something and then Rick Rude starts like choking Mike Tanay and then starts uh, making him do the monkey thing so he puts make one you know put their hands on their mouth the other one put their hands on their eyes and then one put their hands on their ear and makes them sit there until they leave then next up, we had a match of Disco Inferno taking on Saturn. And so at one point in the match, Saturn ends up throwing Disco into the railing by the flock. And then Disco does a whole backdrop onto Saturn, who falls onto the flock. So Disco's goes up against the railing and stuff. And Saturn goes running at it, like charges at him. And Disco just bends down and does the whole backdrop thing. And Saturn falls onto the flock. And then Lodi grabs a hold of Disco and starts to like try and attack him, but Disco ends up hitting the chart buster onto the round. So it's like a stone cold stunner type thing. It's just a like a cut sit down cutter. But he does it onto the railing, so I assume that would hurt if you actually did that, but it's wrestling, so it doesn't really matter. And then back inside the match, they fight a little more, and Disco ends up hitting the chart buster on Saturn in the ring and gets the pin off that. So Disco is now the new TV champ once again. And then the Flock comes in and tries to attack Disco, but he just narrowly escapes the ring out with the title. We then go to a Nitro Party video of a fraternity at the University of Illinois, such so as a frat house and a bunch of guys, you know, celebrating or having fun and watching Nitro and drinking and stuff. And then it comes back to a Nitro Girls segment. And then we go into a match of Buff Bagwell coming out with Vincent, taking on Lex Luger. So we got that match for tonight. So very early on in the match, Buff to the camera ends up claiming that he's the total package in, in the WCW. And then he starts posing down a lot, especially after he, he'll do a move and then start posing and stuff. 
and Buff dominates most of the match, but Luger eventually does get control, and at the same time, like, as soon as he starts to get the upper hand, it shows the entrance or walkway and stuff, and Scott Norton is walking down the ramp area, and so I assumed he would get involved immediately, but he, it took a little bit. But Luger hits two clotheslines, and his, I think they call it bionic elbow, even though I know that's Dusty moves, but his elbow, because he has the metal in his elbow, and then he starts the signal for the torture act and starts to go for it, but Buff ends up rolling out of the ring and so Luger follows after him and as Luger gets out of the ring Vincent comes running over and so Luger fights him and like kind of gets him out of the way and then Buff had ran got up at this point and ran back into the ring and so he starts to go for that but Scott Norton gets his attention just like taps on him and so that's, they start like jawing at each other like you know just saying stuff back and forth to each other and as I mentioned Buff had gotten back into the ring so the ref starts to count the 10 and I think Luger and Norton had started fighting at this point or maybe not till after the count but the ref ends up counting to 10 so Buff gets the win by count out and then like they beat up Luger and stuff. Then we got an NWO black and white commercial and this time it's all of Hulk Hogan beating up Roddy Piper. I don't know why because I don't know if Piper was back again ever again but they just show a bunch of like clips of Hogan beating up Roddy Piper and stuff. And then that goes into our main event of Scott Hall taking on Diamond Dallas Page. And so as Scott Hall comes out, he does the whole survey. And this time it was overwhelmingly for the NWO. So the NWO is a stronghold there in Buffalo, New York. And so then DDP comes out and they have the match. And so at one point in the match, not very much like goes on throughout the actual match. It's kind of boring. They end up trading some abdominal stretches. So if that kind of tells you what's going on and stuff. Until Page ends up hitting what, again, what they call the pancake. I don't know what kind of move that is but he ends up hitting the pancake and starts to go for the diamond cutter but the nwo comes running out and so Paige starts fighting off as many as he can until he just gets outnumbered and they all beat him up and stuff and so they're all beaten up Paige, and once again it goes to a shot of the ceiling and a sting is falling from the ceiling or being dropped from the ceiling and you can tell once again that it's a dummy and it falls to the ring and goes through the ring once again so it's cool how they like nail that spot i mean just how it hits directly where it's supposed to to rip through the ring and stuff and goes underneath the ring and so they're you know obviously assume it's just a dummy again so their nwo is not worried about so they just continue to do stuff to page until hogan grabs a microphone and starts kind of promo on sting and so he orders the nwo i think he says it to kurt henning but kurt henning's like one of the last guys to get there to go get sting up and get him up here in the ring so he can beat him up some and so they go over and start pulling up the dummy out of the ring and this time you can tell that the dummy isn't doesn't look as dummyish and that it's actually sting so that's why it went all the way through the ring so you couldn't see it anymore and it was they replaced you know took the dummy off the line and put sting on it so it looked like it was still the dummy but it's actually sting but sting's like going completely limp and so he, you know it's acting like he's faking stuff because they're like dragging around his feet or just just dragging and they prop like lay him up on the rope because Hogan and Bischoff had gotten out to the outside and uh so Sting's pretending to be a dummy up against the rope and Hogan starts you know talking on the mic again and starts to say I'm going to teach this guy this dummy a lesson and starts to go for Sting and as he does Sting pulls fake Sting stuff off to you know make it seem like he wasn't really himself and starts taking he tries to take the whole like harness off that drop you know used to drop from the ceiling but he can't like can't get it off and so he can't disconnect it off so he's still got the rope attached to him and everything and he starts fighting off the nwo and just um hits some scor scorpion death drops on a couple guys and stuff and it shows hogan and bischoff and they're just standing outside at ringside or whatever and they're just have a horrified look on their face and it's their face that ends the show as it fades to black and so that's it for Nitro this week. So we covered Nitro and Raw from December 8th, 1997. I'd say they're both pretty good and decent. Like I felt good about this week. Because of course like I mentioned with the whole Raw stuff. And then with Nitro we're leading up to Starcade, Which is like I said their um, biggest pay-per-view ever in their history. And so you know we got a lot of big stuff going on here. So it's fun and interesting to lead up to. Even though I don't think it takes place until after December. So I think I may actually try and watch that pay-per-view. Like maybe over Christmas and stuff with having some days off and everything I may watch it just to know what happens because I've never seen it or anything and so that may be fun and stuff so again they're both really good I'd still again have to give it to night or raw because of being shorter and then a lot more entertaining stuff happened on there
there. But still pretty good overall. So that's going to be it for the Monday Night Rewind podcast this week. Again, we covered Raw 237 and Nitro 117 from December 8th, 1997. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to on YouTube to subscribe and leave any comments you have down below. On iTunes, leave a review and subscribe to listen to the podcast. Or you can find us at SoundCloud under Monday Night Rewind along with iTunes. So you can find the podcast there and listen to it as a podcast. Or like I said on YouTube, watch the video even though it's just a picture with commentary. And you can listen to it there as well to keep up every week with every new episode on the weekends. So I hope you enjoy this Monday Night Rewind. Thank you for listening and I will speak to you next week.